Hi, I'm Heidi Hope. Welcome to the She's Gone Free podcast, a show where I share my story as a creative entrepreneur and mother, my journey to a full heart, my often messy ADHD brain, and the stories, hearts, and minds of other incredible women who have healed, found joy, and stepped into their greatness to live a life on fire with purpose. You have found this podcast because you are ready to walk this path too, and I'm so glad that you're here. Hi guys, I just got this question from someone in our coaching community and it is a question that I receive a lot Um, and it's something that I've also gone through in my own career with decision making and so I thought I would just record it as video so that everybody could listen to the answer. Her question was regarding a job opportunity that recently came up and she had been feeling a little bored and stuck in her career. She loved her job but she was sort of like getting bored with it or like what's next or like maybe I need something outside of work that challenges me or fulfills me in in, in a different way. Um, And that's usually where a lot of people enter the coaching practice. And it's not unusual that as soon as you start doing the work and being open to new opportunities that you start drawing new opportunities to you. So now the new opportunity comes in. She has a huge possible promotion. Um, but is also really comfortable where she is and so doesn't really know what to do and doesn't know like what the right decision is, what's my intuition, what's my fear, what's my, like, how do I list out the pros and cons of this? Okay, so here's my sort of intuitive process to decision making. Um, First is the analytical side of the brain. We got to like empty that out. So making a list of pros and cons is really good to empty out the analytical thinker side of ourselves. Um, So write your pros and cons and see if there's a drastic difference on one side or the other that may just give you your answer. Um, If they're pretty equal, which they probably will be (laughs) because we mentally do that. (laughs) We're like, if I have too many cons, I'm going to find another pro. If I have too many pros, I'm going to find another con so that I can stay confused about it, right? That's what our mind likes to trick us into. Um, So go ahead and make that list of pros and cons just to get it all out on paper. Another thing I like to do to appease the analytical mind is to think very briefly, don't linger on this, but to think, well, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst that could happen? Um, I like to do this a lot because when I'm, usually when we have a big up level in life, we feel fear, okay? In fact, so much so that I often ask, what are you most scared to do? because that's pointing you towards what you should do. Um, Because anytime we stretch out of our comfort zone, we're gonna feel fear. If you don't feel fear and butterflies about whatever your next level is, you're not stretching enough, you're just not. So, um, So go ahead and say like, okay, if I take this promotion, here's like the worst way that this could play out. Maybe you feel overwhelmed or you don't see your family as much or whatever. So I want you to write that worst case scenario out. And then ask yourself, is this true? Is this inevitable? Can I know that this is true, that this could really happen? Like how how much of that worst case scenario is your mind running away a little bit into fear? Um, And how much of it is like pretty likely to happen? Okay, so that's one thing. Then there's the best case scenario. So what would be the best case scenario having taken this promotion? Um, is it going to be more challenging, more fulfilling, more money? Maybe you have more time freedom or flexibility or just autonomy within the job. Maybe you get to take on a leadership position or do something you've always wanted to do. So um, write out that best case scenario there too. Um, and then ask yourself this question. What, if anything, is holding me back from saying yes to this? And be really specific about that. Um, and pay attention to how your body feels as you answer that question. If what is holding you back is an internal feeling um, in your gut, like a gut instinct, which you feel down here, that something's not right or you're saying yes for the wrong reasons, like um, think about why, why you would say yes and is it is it from your heart or is it out of obligation or duty or responsibility or even something with your ego, like something that your ego wants um, that your heart really doesn't want. So really pay attention to where your yes is coming from. Is it coming from my heart or not? Um, And then 
And then what could be holding you back from saying that yes? And that's something you might want to just journal on a little bit to kind of get to the bottom of it. If the only thing holding you back is fear of the unknown, then it's a pretty good indicator that you should do it. <laughs> because um, that fear is really just, it's just an illusion. It's tricking you up. But we're, we're hardwired to stay safe and comfortable and not go into danger. And so even though there's no danger in a new job, um, that's just the way our brains are wired to think that way. And so, because it's just new and it's different and it's something we haven't experienced yet. And so, um, so yeah, that fear of the unknown is just a natural way that our brain works, but it doesn't mean it's something that we should really fear, right? The next thing I would do is go a little bit deeper, try to drop out of the analytical mind and actually ask your, pay attention to how you feel, ask your heart and pay attention to how you feel in your heart when you think about taking the job or saying yes, and then think about in your heart how it feels to say no. Pay attention to that because one of them probably will feel a little more excited, a little more um, joyful, enthusiastic, and a wrong choice, a lot of times a wrong choice if you, if you really pay attention to how your heart feels, imagining making that choice, almost feels a little bit like heartbreak or like sadness or disappointment, you know? So it's like, so pay attention. And then I want you to ask your gut. So that would be dropping down, put, placing your attention in this intuitive center of your stomach. Your gut really is intuitive. Um, and they call it your like second brain. Drop your attention to that area. And then again, imagine yourself saying yes and imagine yourself saying no. And pay attention to how it feels in your gut to say yes and how it feels in your gut to say no. Okay? So all these things are going to start pointing you and kind of, and, and maybe you just write down the answers to those things so that you don't forget all the, all the other steps. Um, and then this is the very last one. This is um, flipping a coin. So you're going to say heads is yes and tails is no or however you want to do it. And you're going to flip the coin up into the air. And when it's up in the air, I want you to pay attention to which way you want it to land. This is a really good trick because if you really want it, like you're in that moment, you're going to want it to say heads. And if you really don't want it deep down in that moment, you're going to want it to say tails. And a lot of times that can um, kind of help point you, lead you in the direction of what's right for you. I also want to say there's no wrong choice for you. Okay. You, once you do this work, um, you make a decision and you stand behind it and you trust. You have to have trust and faith that you're on the right path, whether it's a yes or a no. You have to trust that that's what's right for you right now. And if it's, uh, you're afraid of letting go of an, if let's say it's a no and you're afraid of letting go of that opportunity, it's going to come back around. Like it's going to come knock on your door again when the time is right. Um, what is meant for you will always come back. That is probably the first of many opportunities that are going to be able to be flowing into your life once you get into the zone of being an intentional creator within your life. Um, I think the timing of it is pretty brilliant with um, where you were and what you wanted to call in. And this could be it knocking on your door. If it's a yes and things don't go as well as planned, then maybe that is happening for a reason too. And it's meant to push you in a whole different direction. Uh, into a whole different uh, life, you know, a whole different career or whatever. I, uh, I remember first closing my studio and starting the first business that I started with a business partner after the studio was closed. And I had like a gut instinct about six months in. I was just like, this is not right. This is, this is not. I have a vision and I thought that this business was going to be that vision, but it's not. And I, my gut is telling me there's still something else after this. And I don't know what that was, but I had to, I had to walk away. I had to trust that like, no, like I, I, I made it this far following my intuition. Now I can't ignore this feeling in my gut that something's not right. Um, and I still have, I will still hold that vision. It's just not this, you know? And so I'm only telling you that story to just encourage you that like, Sometimes it takes a little trial and error. Sometimes we make a mistake in, because we're supposed to make that mistake. And so that helps us learn what we don't want to, you know? 
So, um, yeah. So try all that stuff and let me know how it works for you. And I'm excited to hear what your decision is going to be. If you like today's episode, subscribe to the channel and share it to inspire somebody else today. You can rate and review the podcast so it reaches more ears. And of course, I always love your comments. Follow me on your favorite social media platform at Heidi Hope, Photographer Rising, and She's Gone Free. Or visit HeidiHope.com to get on my insider list and hear about upcoming coaching and online learning opportunities. Thanks for listening. I'm so grateful for you.